friends welcome to my workplace at ranaghat west bengal india this is a congenital cataract the child is 4 years old let us observe this surgery this is the main incision on the posterior aspect of the limbus with a 2.8 mm keratome we can see some blood oozing out from the lips of the main incision and now this is a small side port on the right side of the main incision and this is another side port on the left side of the main incision this side port has been on the anterior part of the limbus and now an air bubble has been injected into the anterior chamber and this is tripan blue 0.06 percent dye being applied over the anterior capsule underneath this air bubble now i wash the dye out this is adrenaline and in this case adrenaline has worked very well see the people is dilating yes it has dilated very well and this dilatation remained throughout the surgery so now 2% ASPMC is injected into the anterior chamber and this is the time to do capsulorexis. I'm using a 26 case band needle to raise a capsular tag and now I use a uterator forceps hold this capsular tag and do the rexis. In pediatric cataracts the capsule behaves very and uh, it tends to go to periphery so we have to create a balance between how much to pull the pull should always be towards the center and if we pull judiciously then we can get the right size of rexus Yes, this is a good rexis. In children, the rexis should not be small because there is more chance of capsular phimosis in children. So, this is a good size rexis, about 5.5 millimeter. Now, hydrodissection is being done. You can see the fluid wave goes to the other side. And now, we can use bimanual irrigation aspiration to remove this lens matter, but it takes a longer time. This cataract is sticky and there is some hard part at the center. So it is always better to use the FECO handpiece, go bevel down and make the bevel up at the right time. And see how easily we can remove the lens matter we can use very little ultrasonic energy say about 10 percent ultrasonic energy when it is required when the lens mass occludes the tip of the FECO handpiece and in no time the lens matter is removed now 2 percent ASPMC is injected again and I am taking a 23 Gauss Simco to remove this cortical matter see how beautifully we can remove we can remove this this is just like coaxial irrigation aspiration yes the lens matter has been removed nicely and now this is misco again 2% ASPMC in this case in this four year old child I'm going to do posterior CCC, posterior continuous curvilinear capsular axis. Again, use the 26 case pan needle and raise a capsular tag. And use the same uterator forceps, hold this capsular tag, and do a posterior continuous curvilinear capsular axis. This rexis should be smaller than the anterior rexis. So we have to again 
pull the capsule very judiciously. We have to create a balance between the centripetal force and the centrifugal force and thus we get the optimum sized posterior CCC. Now I'm going to use a beaker tree so I enlarge the main wound and in this case I have selected Technis multipiece intraocular lens because this lenses fits very well in the capsular bag and the lens doesn't rotate. And here goes the leading haptic. We must be sure that it is going between the anterior capsular rim and the posterior capsule. And I become sure of it as it kings the anterior capsular rim. And now I turn the cartridge anticlockwise and after the lens unfolds completely I take a Sinsky hook support the haptic optic junction and then I remove the injector. I try to uh, dial this haptic into the capsular bag but it didn't go. So what I do is I dial the lens 360 degree bring the trailing haptic again at 12 o'clock and now I go through the right side port with the Sinsky and take a blunt instrument the blunt chopper and help this haptic to go into the capsular bag. Yes, the lens, the haptics are in the capsular bag. This multi-piece lenses are more stable in these in the capsular bags than the single piece lenses. It will never rotate. And now I'm going to do limited anterior vitectomy. Why? Because unless we remove some portion of the anterior vitreous, what will happen is the cells will grow rapidly over the anterior haloid phase and form a sheet of Elsnick pulse within few months and the visual axis will be obscured. So, in such cases in young children, we must do a limited anterior vitrectomy. Yes, vitrectomy is done with 23 Gauss Carter. This is Faro's from Oatley. And This is looks nice. Now I'm going to inject an air bubble because the antechamber tends to become shallow. And I'm going to put two switches on uh, the left side port, which is in the anterior side of the limbus. The other side port is uh, has got a small conjunctival flap with it. So it will not require any suture and the side port on the right side is smaller. So I'm putting two sutures on at this side port and at on at the main incision. It is always better when we have done vitectomy to put sutures because we cannot allow the anterior chamber to collapse. So two sutures have been applied. Now this is triamsinolone acetate. I want to check if there is any vitreous strands in the anterior chamber or not. Moreover this will reduce the 
inflammation inflammatory response that is usually more in children so this tramsulonum acetate has two purposes one is it will detect if there is any vitreous strands the other is inflammatory response will be subdued and now we find that there is no vitreous strands so I inject air again because the entire chamber is becoming shallow and I'm going to inject a bit of pilocarbon if there is any vitreous strand anywhere hooking the pupillary border if we constrict the pupil the pupil will be picked to that side so this is a double check we have checked once with the transmural acetate and again with pilocarpine this is intracameral pilocarpine from Sanwes 1% pilocarpine And this is the knot, and the knot is buried. Into tissue. And this is moxifloxacin. The moxifloxacin is being used to hydrate the right side port. And now let me check if the anterior chamber is stable or not. And what I do is I form the anterior chamber and find that there is no leakage from the main wound also. The antichamber is nicely formed. But since I have put this suture, it is good because if there is any pressure on the eyeball, this wound will not open. So we are towards the end of the surgery. So in this video, we have seen a lot of things. Rexis, while doing the rexis, we must keep a balance anterior CCC or posterior CCC we must keep a balance between the centripetal force and centrifugal force to get the right kind of rexis must do antiavitectomy and suture the wounds and then conclude the case thank you very much for your attention hope this video will help you in developing your surgical skills please learn posterior ccc it is not difficult you just have to find a balance between centripetal force and centrifugal force be a great surgeon and serve the patients with love respect empathy and great surgical competence